Hey guys, t -Bull here. Today I got a King Charge to fit three play for you. It's on the map Trident uh, Domination match. Uh, right off the bat, I got this Colorado that doesn't really know how to drive <laughs> or pilot his ship very well. Uh, so anyway, after we deal with this guy, we'll get the match rolling. Uh, the King George V, I think, is one of the more complicated ships to play in the game. Uh, it requires a very active switching back and forth of the shells that you're using uh, to maximize the potential. You can play it two ways. You can either just shoot at HE constantly, and that, that'll work. And I've actually tried that a handful of times and had some pretty good games with that. Um, but to maximize your output, you want to shoot HE at everything except for broadside cruisers. And if you can watch the mini-map and notice when a broadside cruiser is going to be within your, you know, ability to shoot at them in, you know, roughly 25 seconds, give or take. Um, and you get the shell switched in and hit them with that, that's how you're going to maximize your damage. Now here I just want to point out, for people that don't think they can hit uh, destroyers long range, you definitely can. If you're using the two times zoom like this, just multiply that seconds to target number by three, the left hand number, and that'll sight you. And the, my video where I went over how to aim in the beginner series, that was based on the one time zoom, which I don't really use that too often, and I'm assuming most of you guys use the two times zoom. So if you're shooting destroyers, use a times three multiplier. And I'm not going to talk about how to use that method of aiming too much. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put the, put that as one of the suggested videos at the end. You can watch that. But what I want to say is if you're one of the many, many players that are, I don't know if afraid is the right word, but reticent to shoot destroyers at long range because you can't think, you, or you don't think you can hit them, you can hit them, all right? You just need to practice it. And if Aiming long distance shots in this game is like the one hard mechanic that there really is. The rest of being good at the game is just kind of learning the intricacies and applying them. You know, I mean, it's a fairly complicated game even though on the surface it seems like it's very easy to play. But mechanics wise, you know, shooting those long range shots and making them hit consistently, that's, that's really the only hard thing to do. But to get better at that aspect of the game, you have to actually do it. You can't just say, well, I'm not good at long range shots, so I'm just only going to shoot short range. You're going to not be as good of a player as you should be if you're limiting yourself like that, so practice that. Now there's a great time to have a AP shell loaded. Uh, actually, that's probably, I would say that's a mistake. Maybe I was thinking I wasn't going to be able to sight that guy again. But I did have time. This is a relatively quick reload on the ship compared to the other two uh, battleships at the class. Now the Atlanta hasn't popped back in, so maybe I was thinking I wasn't able to sight him. Which would have been accurate, but... Anyway, that, that, those are the opportunities you're looking for. Now you can see there are the HE shells... The British AP shells uh, have like high damage, or I'm sorry, high chance to penetrate compared to most of the other nations. So what that means is just your HE shells hitting the ship alone will do a lot of damage, or you could just completely <laughs> miss the ship like I did there, but I was going to say like look at those numbers pop up, but then we call that a whiff in the business. But anyway, you'll see when I hit volleys, um, you know, a lot, a lot of the, you're getting a lot of good damage just from landing the shots, and you combine that with a 41% chance to start a fire per sh per shell that hits, you know. So the HE spam, just playing that way 100% of the time, is a viable method. And like I said, I've had some decent games doing it, but. Um, you'll see, I don't know when it comes up, I do have one, I think, broadside shot against Cruiser in this game, and ends up working out pretty well. Here's this Mahan, he's, he's not going full speed, otherwise I'd completely blap him too. 
Ships, when they're angled in, when they're coming at you diagonally or moving away from you diagonally, I don't look at my seconds to target as much, and I don't use that horizontal aim reticle as much. What I'm trying to do, at least currently, is just draw a line, like, imaginary line in my mind where they're, where they're heading, and then just mentally kind of judge how long it's going to take. So I'm basically aiming with just the circle in the middle of the screen, dice bisecting that line that I've drawn mentally, you know. And so if the ship is turning, I'm kind of... It's complicated to explain, but I'm just trying to say I don't use the number in the horizontal line as much when they're angled, at least at a steeper angle than, you know, just slightly away from that aim or the horizontal line. Concentrate fire on the designated and here we got the AP shell with the Atlanta. And so you need to be looking for opportunities like this. You can see just completely deleted. Now why that's so effective on the ship is I've talked about the British AP a fair amount on this channel, usually in battleship replays. They have shorter fuses than the standard AP rounds, so when a normal battleship, or a non-British battleship, I should say, shoots a broadside cruiser, a good chunk of those shells are going to over-penetrate the ship, which means they the shell travels through, it travels into the ship and then out the other side before the fuse is set and explodes, so you get about a thousand damage, give or take, depending on what ship you're playing when you get an overpin. So not a very good shot damage wise on a cruiser, but with the shorter fuse on the British AP, the shell, the fuse arms when it hits something. So it hits the first surface and then because it has a quicker time to explode, or it doesn't take as long to explode, it's more likely to explode internally. So, you know, what that, you know, if you're shooting other battleships, who have multiple layers of armor to get through before it hits, before you get into like the juicy internal spots where all the damage is located. That's why the short fuses suck on against those, but on cruisers, you know, if you can, if you can hit the shots properly, that, that's where the damage is at. So again, just to reiterate, just shoot HE either all the time or all the time except for broadside cruisers and I would recommend trying to switch back and forth. Now I wish they would set it up so the commanders could you could set up a commander per ship and then customize the perks that it uses per ship and just have it set for that ship because if you could do that on this particular ship I would use the perk that allows you to switch ammo types back and forth quicker. I don't switch ammo types on the Queen Elizabeth for instance so and I don't like to change my perks every time I switch a ship in the line so it's just it's too much work and I forget to do it so I don't ever put on the loader perk when I play this but if the game was set up to allow you to like you know I have Cunningham as my commander if I could have the reload perk on this ship alone then I would do that that's the point I'm making. So I know Wargaming doesn't watch my videos, but <laughs> if anyone wants to suggest that to them one way or another, or maybe I'll suggest it to them at some point, I think that'd be a good thing. Now, something I want to point out about the ship, that third gun is very, it's at a really bad angle. You gotta go very steep. You know, you have to be very broadside to get all your guns firing in the ship. But the armor scheme is set up so that I don't think that really matters. Here's a, there's a few considerations here, okay? The Citadel is very deep underwater. It's typical of a lot of the British battleships. And we'll see about the cruisers when they come out. I don't, not familiar with those as much, but in general, the battleships are very hard to hit Citadels at the waterline. So you don't really have to worry about that on the ship. If you're completely flat broadside and, you know, you start to have some trouble. And you can see if I turn the, the camera to the side there, there's a little bulge right above the waterline. That's a little extra bit of armor on the ship. And I think that strip of armor right there is the strongest at this tier. 
in terms of battleships or frankly with any ships then at least all the three nations we have currently now we'll see how Germany stacks up when we get them in a couple weeks but what that means is these you're you're not really worried about getting citadeled at the waterline at least I'm not I, I very rarely if ever hit waterline citadels on the ship when I'm playing against it and I don't think I have gotten citadel much when I'm playing this if at all where you can citadel this is if it's at very long range you can drop the shells through the deck I don't think the decks very well armored so those of you that like to play your battleships as far away from the action as possible just can keep that in mind like you're probably you're increasing your chances to get sizzled quite a bit by playing at max range and the ship is my point I would play it at kind of a medium to long range you know maybe 10 kilometers let's just say I'm just gonna throw that out there it would be like a nice sweet spot for this um, but at max long range where other battleships are dropping your sh the shells in vertically on you you're gonna get in trouble there's about a lot to cover on this ship and I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff that I was hoping to mention but why I switched over that King George V there to take some shots is because I had this island to my immediate north here blocking me from return fire from the Colorado now I knew it was gonna take the Colorado a little bit to turn around or begin backing up you can see there he finally popped back up on the mini-map but we had enough time to take some shots at the King George V safely and obviously we're in garbage time in this game I've, we've lost but I'm trying to I'm just working on my own credits and XP earn at this point because this isn't a fully maxed out ship and I, I don't have the Vanguard unlocked yet at the point of I'm playing this game so I'm trying to maximize my score even you know which I do every game anyways but I figured I could squeeze a little bit more out of that lemon if I let the Colorado do his thing and then I switch my attention got some extra damage so again the takeaways of the ship um, the armor is very interesting on oh, the other thing I forgot to mention about it is the bow and stern armor are very weak so you can get overmatched there I think from all the other battleships at this tier so I, the armor is just very bizarre. Like you're gonna take a lot of damage, but you're not gonna take civil damage unless you're playing at max range. So I guess is my point. If you're shooting at them, shoot the top half of the hull and then the superstructures. Or if they're at long range, shoot them. You know, basically at the top of the hull and hope for those shells to drop in. Um, but yeah, I I don't worry about armor England as much as I do in most battleships and I really don't seem to suffer any wars for it maybe I'm wrong about that but that's how I play it and that's pretty much all I can squeeze into this I know there's a lot to cover but hopefully that helped you out with the ship if you did like the video please hit the thumbs up if you're new to the channel cons consider subscribing there's plenty more World of Warships all the time questions comments leave them below love to hear from you guys and we'll see y'all later all right peace